Hello everyone and welcome to episode 16 of the FDS series and in this one we're going to do checkbox and radio components. And if we start in the web library we can just come to button group pill down here, right click on it, go duplicate page, change its name to checkbox, come over to the title and paste that in here and let's go get the description from my own design system and bring it back. Just going to copy this, go back paste it in here, delete this component and reset this to about maybe 1200 in height. Okay, let's just zoom in. Let's close this and create a frame that's 24 by 24. I'm just gonna hit F, just drag it out. There you go, 24, let's zoom in again. I'm just gonna rename this checkbox. It's a frame. I'm going to turn it into a component now, then come back and we're going to add its background. So it's going to be background primary and then its stroke is going to be border secondary. Then we're going to come over and make the border radius eight. So let's just hit our variable there. Wait till eight is shown. And there we go. And with that done, Let's go and create another variant. Make sure they're ordered properly. Don't know why Figma always does this, but here we go. And let's select the component, rename this to state. And that's okay as default. This can be hover, All right? So we're gonna select it and change its background to background hover. And then we're gonna do another variant by just hitting this plus. Let's bring it into the middle. This state is going to be called pressed. Right? Background hover changes to pressed. Then we're going to do another one. And we're going to call this focus. And we're going to change its border to focus. And then reset its background to primary. And while we're here, let's just position it 48 from the left, like we always do. And what's it from the top again? Let's go and grab that from another one. 328. Let's just move that down. Here we go. Okay, and let's select all of them and make a couple of tweaks. So the border width is now going to get a variant added to it of XS. We're going to change the order of the layers here. So they match what we have. And one last tweak before we add the other variants and properties, we're going to change this to two. There we go. Now you really know it's focused. All right, let's add the checked one first. So I'm just going to add it over here by doing a comma and then going checked equals false. I'm going to copy this and add it to the rest. And when we do that, if we pull one out here so we can test it, we can see that we've got the state as hover, pressed, and focus, and we've also got checked, right? Now we wanna make checked as actually checked. So let's select this first one and duplicate it, bring it all the way to the bottom. And then we're gonna go checked true. Let's zoom in remove the stroke and change the background to info, right? And now all we need is a tick icon. So let's come over to assets, go to FDS iconography, type in tick, grab the 24 one. So we're just gonna insert instance from there, drag that into here, go back to the layers. Okay, it's positioned itself nicely in the middle. Great, we're gonna change its color to primary inverse. And let's add another variant. I'm gonna drag this one underneath there and add indeterminate equals false. Let's just pull this out. Let's see if we can add that to the other variants by just 
pulling this down and going false as well. I might just move this into the middle so we're centered and can focus on what we're doing. Let's go and add the indeterminate icon, which is a minus. And we can do that by going up to the top here, typing in minus because there's already an icon placed and then replace it with the minus icon. Now indeterminate is when you've got a list of options and then a parent that can select all of them. Now, if you select two, say out of four of those options, then the parent is gonna turn into this. Now indeterminate now is set to true. There we go. Now let's add the errors and we're gonna add it to the default state first. So we're gonna go error equals true, which means all the rest, uh, error, false. Select it again, change its border to negative, and then make it two pixels. And to start ordering these properly, let's just move this out. Move error up to here, about 16 pixels away. Then we're gonna duplicate this one. Change this to error true and check true and then come down to background info and change that to negative. We're gonna grab indeterminate, copy that, do the same thing here, negative and error true. And for the error boolean, let's just change the order of false and true so that I'm now correct there. Okay, now all we need is disabled. So let's select default again, make a new variant, bring it all the way to the bottom, bring it all the way down here, and then add disabled equals true. Resize that out a little bit, change all of the rest of them to disabled false. Select it and change its background to disabled and its stroke to disabled as well. There you go. You really can't use that, can you? Okay, and lastly, we need disabled versions of these as well. So let's add some more variants, change disabled to true. Change the background to disabled. Select the icon and change that to disabled. And then make another variant of indeterminate and do the same here. True. Background disabled. Select the icon and change it to disabled as well. Okay, let's clean things up a little bit. The Boolean here needs to be false first as well. And then let's just test it out, see if everything works. So we've got the fault as checked. Let's reset it. We've got hover, pressed, focus. We've got checked, indeterminate, error. That works, disabled, but error needs to be switched off here. So let's select both of these and change error to false. Let's come back, when we turn on error, now we've got indeterminate error and we've got disabled there. Okay, now everything is set up properly and we can just have fun doing this for the rest of the afternoon. And before we move on to the radio component, let's just clean things up a little bit. I'm gonna move disabled up to here. So we've got the normal states, the error and the disables all in the same columns. Let's just resize this, so it's 16 away from there, and the side, great. Now let's check out their order. I'm gonna move this up here so we can focus on that a bit more. Got default, hover, focus. Okay, we need to have focus there. Then we've got checked, next. Then indeterminate. After that, checked and determinant, then we've got error. Checked error. 
and an determinant error. And then all of the disabled. So this one can be at the top, followed by that and that. Great. All right, there you go. The checkbox component is complete. To make the radio one, we're just going to come over to the pages, duplicate it, all this radio, use that as its title, go and grab the intro, which is here. We're just going to copy this, paste it into there, rename this radio, zoom in. We don't need indeterminate, so we're just going to select them and delete them. And we're going to select everything else. Come over here and change this to 12, which will turn them into circles, which is what we want. We're going to come down to this tick. And since we don't have a dot icon in the feather icons set, we're just going to create our own. I'm going to actually delete this. Make sure I've selected it. Hit O, drag this out, make sure this is 12. With it selected, I'm just going to add content, primary inverse. I'm going to copy it over to this, paste it there, delete the tick icon. It can be the same color for that one. Paste it into the disabled. Select it and change content to disable. Now, it'd be good if these were just called dot. So let's quickly do that now. It's going to copy and paste that into there. I could have used a plugin, but that took less time. All right. And now we have a radio component. Do all of the variants and properties still make sense? OK, so we've got the states. Yes. Uh, checked, which is also yes. If you Google a lot of radio components, you can see that they use that as well. And determinant can get deleted. And we've got error and disabled, which gives us everything we need here. Error and checked. Yep. Disabled and checked. Great. Here we go. I might actually put the disabled border on this one, actually. So let's go to stroke and go border disabled. There we go. And that's it for the radio component. We're going to copy and paste both of these over to the app library and then remove hover. So we just have the default pressed and then the other variants and properties that we need. So let's go to the app library. Let's come down to sticky button and just duplicate this page. Call this checkbox, select everything in here and delete it. Go back to web, select everything in here, copy it, and then paste it. Select hover, delete that. Select everything else. Just move it up to about here. Resize this. Great. You've got a checkbox for the app. Let's do the same thing for the radio. Duplicate the page. Call this radio. Delete everything in here. Come back, come to radio. Select everything, copy it, paste it in here. Select hover. Delete it, close this gap. And resize this. And now we've got the app one. And for one last thing, since we added the disabled border here, let's go back to the checkbox, select these two, go down to stroke and then add it here. Border disabled. There we go, that's better. Let's go over to the app library and do that there. and then go to radio and see if it's done there too. Awesome. All right, that's it for checkbox and radio components for web and app. In the next episode, we're gonna be doing help text. I hope you're looking after yourselves and each other and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.